Welcome to the Commander's Vault. My name is Joe. Today, we're going to do a deck tech over Duskana the Rage Mother. Uh, so we're going to try a little bit different way to record these videos, maybe clean up the audio a little bit here. So uh, Duskana the Rage Mother. When my wife saw this card with part of the spoilers um, for murders at Karlov Manor, she got really excited. Um, as soon as we saw that there was a Mama Bear, my wife just needed to have a Mama Bear Commander deck. So uh, we let our local game shop know, Flip Table Games in Stoughton, Wisconsin. We said, hey, we are going to be looking for a Duskon of the Rage Mother as a commander card, and we want to build a bear tribal deck. That's right. This is a bear tribal deck. Now, this card does come in a pre-con, um, which is all about that disguise mechanic where you flip the card over and it's a 2-2. Two -two. And so in that aspect, this would be really cool. Or if you just decided to have a 2-2 two -two for every creature in the deck, that would make this kind of broken. But we decided, you know what? Let's do a bear tribal. Let's see what we can do. When you've got a three color that just really opens you up to all kinds of fun stuff, but we wanted to stay on theme. So let's talk about it today. So the really cool thing about Duskana is that when she ETBs, you get card draw for every 2-2 two -two creature you have, and base power of 2-2 two -two gets a plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. So it's not just one, it is all. And when you have all 2-2s two -twos with a base power, there's still plenty of ways to give them 1-1 one -one counters or buff them up. It still stays as the base power and toughness of 2-2, two -two, so they still get this buff. It is kind of nuts. So let's talk about the creatures in the deck. First up, we have the Ashcoat Bear. Again, we really just wanted to have as many bears as possible. So you're going to see some older magic cards in here um, that we sought out to put specifically in this deck to make it as bear tribal as possible. For it to be in this deck, it had to be a bear um, or talk about bears or have art of bears in it. So um, Ayula, Queen Among Bears, used to be the de facto bear tribal commander. And you can see why. Uh, whenever a bear ETBs, they get two 1-1 one, one counters, and then you can also either or have that bear fight another target creature you don't control. So you have it, something come in, you give it those two counters, you immediately start taking out mana dorks or smaller creatures. It's a really good way to do that. Um, but having the option of having white and green also, we decided that she would just be part of the 99, and she's a base power and toughness of 2 2, so she falls in that category. Balduvian Bears, again, a bear that's also a 2 2. Bear Cubs, bear, 2 2. I think you guys are going to start seeing um, the commonality here. Uh, Bramble Familiar, this is one of the uh, few exceptions to the bear rule, and it is because it's a mana dork. Um, that is still kind of on theme. It's also a 2-2, and it does have that return it to your hand, and then it also has the mill seven cards, and then put a creature enchantment or land card from among the mill cards onto the battlefield. That's a pretty good thing. So this thing's actually kind of crazy that if you have enough mana, what you do is you bounce this back to your hand, you cast it for the adventure, you mill the cards, you put the stuff on the battlefield, and then you can cast it as the uh, elemental raccoon for the two. Then you can bounce it back again and you can repeat this process. It's pretty nuts. If you've got enough mana to do this, you can mill out your deck. It is pretty cool. All right. Collar of the Claw. Another 2-2. Two -two. This is an elf, but when it enters the battlefield, um, you get a 2-2 two -two for each creature put into the graveyard from the battlefield this turn uh, this is great in response to someone doing a board wipe you drop this down and like okay so i get two two bears for every single one that went circle of the moon druid um this guy has a bear form so when it's your turn he's a four two bear gore claw just an awesome bear to have in the deck it makes any of your big stuff cost two less um and getting trample is just awesome for any deck that's trying to go big. Grizzly bears, 2-2 two -two bear. Mother bear. In a mama bear deck, you got to have a mother bear. So mother bear in here, and 
She has the added benefit that you can exile her and create two 2-2 two, two bears. All right, then we have the owl bear. Um, just, it's too funny. You have an owl bear. The ETB on this is you get to draw the card and trample. Again, always good. Owl bear cub. Uh, this is one of my wife's favorite cards in the deck. It is a 3-3. Three, three. It is a bird bear. Uh, but when it attacks, um, <laughs> my wife's actually had this go off before where she attacked, got to look at the top eight cards and put a creature card tapped and attacking. This can get really, really big. All right, Pale Bears, again, 2-2 two, two Bears, but this one has Island Walk. Um, Island Walk has been crazy good uh, in this deck, and I'll kind of explain why here in a little bit. Carrion Beast Caller, this one, anytime you cast a creature, you get to put a 1-1. One, one. It's got a bear in the art, and on top of it, the crazy thing is this is still a 2-2, two, two. so this one keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but its base power and toughness is still a 2-2, so on attack, it gets an additional 3-3 three, three on top of all the other counters you're doing. This gets out of hand really quickly. Rampaging Yao Guy, if you guys watched our opening of the Fallout collector box, you saw that this is one that we pulled, and my wife was very, very excited for it. Um, another bear to add to the deck that just happens to be a 2-2. Two, two. It has Vigilance and Trample, which are all good things, and you can have it enter with counters on it which is just another really fun way to boost this guy up. Realm Walker, it is a shapeshifter, but it's really a bear. Uh, this allows you to look at the top card of your library and cast off the top of your library. This is just a great card to have in any tribal deck. River Bear with Island Walk. Um, this is just another bear to have in the deck with Island Walk with a prevalence of blue in Commander. It just makes it so this bear is unblockable. Then we have the Rune, Clair, Rune Claw Bear, another 2-2 Bear. Spectral Bears, um, this one uh, this one took us a couple times to read to figure out. So you basically have to attack someone that has black or else you can't untap it, um, which is fine. Uh, this we actually, there's plenty of people playing black. If for some reason there's no one playing black at the table, you just hold this up as a blocker. Spirit of Aldegard, um, we actually have a couple snow lands in this deck that give this the counters and actually allow this to be fetchable. Uh, after playing this, we are considering just moving all of our basics to snow lands that would make this just be kind of out of control. Uh, then we've got Stripe Bears, again, ETB card draw, but it's still a 2-2 bear. Toya Bear Claw, um, this one gives us red and green. It's still a 2-2, so it still gets the buff on it. And when it attacks, it gets plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. So if you have the Curian Beast Caller on here, and you've got that up to a 6 or a 7, okay? So it gets that buff. Then it gets the other plus 3, plus 3 buff. Uh, I had this thing swinging at me, and it was like a 14-14. That was kind of crazy. The great thing about it was she didn't have Trample yet, but as soon as she had Trample, this was almost a game ender. Ulenval Bear, uh, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, if it die, if you, if this enters the battlefield, if a creature died, you get to put two 1-1 one, one counters on it uh, or on a target creature, so that is another way to buff up stuff. Vivian's Grizzly, Grizzly. you get to look at the top card of your library again. Um... And you can either put it in your hand or cycle to the bottom. Wear bear, a mana rock bear, which is great. Uh, and then if you have enough stuff in your graveyard, it becomes a four four bear. Got to have Wilson. If you're gonna have a bear deck, Wilson the refined grizzly must be in the deck, uh, which is great because he can't be countered. He has vigilance, reach, trample. He has ward two. Um, and you can choose a background. He's not the commander, so we're not going to worry about the background part. All right, then we get into our sorceries. We have Blasphemous Act, just a good board wipe. Uh, sometimes we have to use this board wipe, and then we can use this in conjunction um, with our thing that when you play the creature down, it all of a sudden will put two two bears in. So if a board's getting out of control um, or there's a huge token deck going, you can cast Blasphemous Act, wipe the board, cast the creature that gives you two two bears and now you just 
replenished everything right away after a board wipe. It's a pretty crazy combo to do. Cultivate, ramp, farewell. Uh, this was one of the cards that we pulled in Fallout. Um, this immediately went in here. Again, exile artifacts, creatures, enchantments, graveyards. This is just, this is mean. It's just mean all the way around. Grizzly Fate. It's a grizzly on it. It creates bear tokens. Um, if you got enough stuff in your graveyard, you create even more bear tokens. And you can cast it again. All right, then we got Kamal Summons. Each player uh, may reveal any number of creature cards from their hand. Then each player creates a 2-2 green bear creature token for each card they've revealed this way. Um, this one had a little bit of confusion on when to play it. So how this works is you want to wait till people don't have very many cards left in hand. If they've got one or two and you know you're holding creatures in your hand, then you cast this, show what you got, and then create that many tokens and you still get to keep all the creatures in your hand. It's pretty crazy. Pick your poison. This has started to go in all of our green decks. It's just a really good, efficient one drop that gets rid of so many things. You're forcing people to sacrifice stuff instead of exiling it. Um, this has been used to remove mana rocks. It's been used to remove some of the best enchantments that are out there. This is just a really, really great utility sorcery. Savage Swipe, it's got a bear. A Braid, this, we use this more to destroy artifacts than we do to damage creatures, but it does work against creatures. Boros Charm, just a really good utility. Removal, Break the Spell. Uh, surprisingly, we actually use this quite a bit to destroy enchantments. Um, just with the prevalence of enchantments and how hard they are to get rid of, for one white to be able to destroy an enchantment is great. Especially if people try to en enchant your stuff, this is a really good way to break that. When you're going against any of the enchantment decks that are trying to slow the game down with controlling you, you can cast this to remove that and you get benefit that way. Break the Ties, another removal spell. Cosmic Hunger, just another way to deal damage, especially as you start bumping your creatures up. Cheap cost to... Do damage and removal. Furl is favor. Um, get more counters on stuff and get lands. So it's just ramp. Again, removal through damage. Heroic intervention, probably the best green instant protection spell that there is. Hex gold slash. This is just another cheap removal to get rid of any of the small stuff that's out there. This is pretty nuts. Um, inspiring Call, you get to cast this. You get to draw a card for each creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it. Then they get indestructible until end of turn. So when you want to swing big, you cast this, draw all the cards, swing out. None of your stuff's going to die. Probably a bunch of their stuff's going to die. It's pretty crazy. Lull, a, another way to prevent combat damage. Um, this is either they're swinging in at you with big stuff and you want to make sure that they can't kill you or you're swinging in. You want to keep your stuff till the next turn. Monstrous Rage. It's got a bear. Sundering Growth. Another removal. Unholy Heat. Another removal. And then we get to our mana rocks. All right. So Arcane Signet. Um, we pulled this one in the Fallout stuff. Just a great utility. Behemoth Sledge, having Trample is huge, so something that gives Trample and Life Lake is just another bonus. Lightning Greaves, got to protect the commander. Stuffed Bear, this one is just funny to have in there. It was a bear, it's an artifact. Uh, this is a great way when people start removing creatures and they haven't removed an artifact, you can pay into this, creates an artifact. Alpha Status, this one is absolutely insane so you can enchant a creature it gets a plus two plus two for each other creature on the battlefield that shares a creature type in a kindred deck or in a tribal deck you're talking huge this can get absolutely insane Ayula's influence again you can discard a land create 
a 2-2 two, two green bear creature token. Bear Umbra. So this one, this one's just crazy. Um, enchanted creature gets 2-2, two, two, and whenever it attacks, you untap all lands you control. And if the creature would die, um, you can remove all the damage and destroy the aura instead. So this is absolutely nuts that you can just keep attacking with this and untapping your lands is pretty crazy. Bearscape, you can exile two cards from your graveyard and create a green bear creature token. Garrick's Uprising, if you're going to be getting stuff that is big, you'll want your stuff to get through. So this gives the things trample. When you are swinging with five fives repeatedly and several of them, you want to make sure they can get through. People can only deal with so many five fives coming at them. This gives you a chance to get through. Guardian Project, card draw, hardened scales. This is this just if something's gonna get a one-one, it gets another one-one on top of it. Hibernation's end, cumulative upkeep. Uh, you get to search your library and you get to put in your hand and you can keep doing this uh it was a bear card but after we saw this we were like "Ooh, this is pretty cool and being in green you're gonna have enough mana to to cover this a few times raid bombardment uh this is the backup plan in case people keep removing your commander you still have a ton of two twos that are doing damage so this is a way to make sure that damage actually gets through so when they attack, if you don't have your commander out, if your commander got removed, you're still getting a benefit of swinging with them. Bringing in the day, this gives everything haste, which haste is never a bad thing, and all your legendaries are going to get a plus one, plus oh. Shared animosity. Anytime you have kindred or tribal attacking, they get a plus one, plus oh. Um... Yeah, for each other attacking creature of the creature type. So that, it stacks up. It is kind of crazy. Unnatural growth, doubling everything at every combat. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Words of the Wildling. So you pay one, and next time you would draw... Um... All right, so, <laughs> sorry about that. So this one's just a way to create... Bear tokens. Uh, and then we get into our land base. So for our lands, um, the really cool thing about this one is if you look on it, you can keep making bear tokens, right? So this is just a way to keep making bear tokens. Uh, and then the rest are just utility lands as we have in here. Um, these are lands that you would have in pretty much any other deck like this. We have some cycling lands, a lot of basic lands, a lot of lands that, you know, a lot of the, some of the snow lands, and then back to our commander. So guys, this, this commander actually did a lot of work. Uh, my wife's played this two times in different pods at the shop, and the first time we were playing in a five-person pod, and it didn't really give us a good idea of what this deck can do. It was kind of all over the place, didn't get a lot of the good card draw, was able to interact, hung around to near close to the end of the game before someone was able to just kind of close out the game and start removing stuff. The second time we played this, we were playing in a four-person pod, um, and I think I was playing Cranko... Um, I don't remember what the other two decks were, and my wife was playing this Toscana, and she was able to single-handedly remove a player uh, by having Island Walk. So those two bears that had Island Walk, two other players had Islands, and so she was able to just continually hit them that they couldn't block at all. And it was crazy. She single-handedly removed one player because of that, and then... Um, it got into the politicking between the other player that she could hit unblocked and me, and they had kept trying to remove my Cranko because I just kept creating more and more goblins. I had enough stuff to chump block, and she didn't quite have the trample yet, and so I would just create more goblins, be able to block all of her stuff, 
And anytime I would swing in, it was forcing me then to hold back blockers. So that's the cool thing about this commander is that even if you're going wide with this, you can't full send because if you do, you're going to leave yourself open to the crackback. And the way we were going in order is I was right after her. So it would make it so that I wouldn't be able to defend. So if I didn't have lethal, I couldn't swing on her. And so as we got closer near to the end of the game, she actually drew Garrick's uprising when she dropped that. She went at me, killed me, and then still had enough. And they battled it out at the end. And I think the other person was able to remove her commander, remove uh, Garrick's uprising. As soon as he did that, he got flyers and finished her off. And so this deck performed really, really well. When this deck starts going, the, the danger of this deck is you can have card draw, you can get your creatures big enough, and then you do have enough to get trample in or have the island walk, and you can start just really performing at a great clip to get this commander in to finish off the damage. And being able to buff everything that much, it does not take very long for this to get out of hand. So, guys, I hope you like this video. Sorry it was a little bit longer. We had some issues with our recording equipment. So, uh, But Duskana the Rage Mother, if you guys like this, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. You guys can follow all of our decks on Moxfield under the Commander's Vault MTG. Uh, we'll be doing another deck tech here shortly, and we hope you guys enjoy. Until then, have a good one. Shuffle up, find a good group, and play.